The 2024 NFL Draft is just over a week away, and there's so much to talk about with the draft and so many questions to answer. So I figured I should talk about the draft with a football enthusiast. He is the host of the Zach Gelb Show on the Infinity Sports Network, the one and only Zach Gelb. Zach, what's going on, man? Dexter, what's going on, my man? Great to have Thanks for having me. No, good to have you here. NFL Draft, I know how much you love football. I had to have you here to talk some NFL. Of course, best time of the year. Best time of the year. So, Zach, as we approach the NFL Draft, I know all the fans are excited about this. People always want to know about the quarterbacks. In your eyes, who are the top three quarterbacks, and what sets them apart from the rest of the draft class? So, it's uh, Caleb Williams, number one. I don't think that's any earth-shattering secret with what he was <laughs> able to do at USC. I feel like the only complaints with Caleb Williams is some of the off-the-field stuff, which I don't really think there are any off-the-field concerns, but I think that's more of a product of prospect fatigue where they pick the little things and they wonder how he's going to translate into a locker room. I don't have a concern on that front. So Caleb Williams is the best player from a quarterback standpoint in this draft. Then two Jaden Daniels. Guy had 1,100 rushing yards this past year at LSU. I know he threw for 40 passing touchdowns at his Heisman Trophy winning season, but that dual threat kind of presence is what fits in the year of 2024 in the NFL. And then my uh, third quarterback would be Drake May, where Drake May I have like a love-hate relationship with because if he could put it all together, people say, okay, he could be somewhat like Josh Allen. But when I watch him play, sure he's big, sure he's athletic, but I see too many Carson Wentz types of throws, Ooh. and that concerns me. He didn't pop off when I was watching him this past year at UNC. Okay, yeah, and even if you're going for Josh Allen, that, that has been an experience. Bills fans know this. That's been an experience of up and down. But, but know, he's a top three quarterback he's in the league. top three quarterback yeah. in the league, so the payoff has been good in that regard. I want to ask you about another quarterback who's been getting a lot of buzz over the past month, and that's J.J. McCarthy, McCarthy from Michigan, Okay. Has he, has he been worth the hype? His stock has risen up. You've seen a lot of people talking about him. Maybe he'd be a first-round pick. Are you buying the J.J. McCarthy stock? And are you a believer in selecting him with a first-round pick? Well, I'm the perfect person to ask because my, my two best friends, they both <laughs> attended Michigan. They have made me a Michigan football fan. So the last three years, I've watched every single Michigan Wolverines game. And here's what I'll say about J.J. McCarthy. All right. I felt like at times they could have used him better and they could have asked him to do more, and they didn't do so because of how great their offensive line was, and then having the running backs like Blake the Great and Blake Corum, and then Donovan Edwards as well. I think he is a first-round pick. I would not take him in the top 10. I think he is a potential good quarterback, but not a great quarterback, and fit matters. Like, if he gets drafted by the Patriots, going to be a disaster. If he gets drafted by the Giants, going to be a disaster. But if he goes to a place like Minnesota, ah. where you have Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison, I think J.J. McCarthy could be a good quarterback in the league. It's funny, because I was going to ask you about Minnesota. My producer, Emma K. Austin, who's a big Vikings fan, I knew she... Skull? We doing the skull? Yeah, yeah we, can, we, can, we, can go, we can go with that. So you think he could be a good fit there, and that because that he's got the weapons. Got the yes, weapons. I think they're either going to get Drake May or J.J. McCarthy. They have to move up. They have the 11th pick right now. You said goodbye to Kirk Cousins. He's in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. You can't roll into this season with Sam Darnold <laughs> as your quarterback. We all know Sam Darnold's remembered for two things in this town, seeing ghosts, seeing ghosts. and getting mono, okay? Yeah. Well, they cannot have Sam Darnold as a starting quarterback, especially when Justin Jefferson doesn't have that contract done. Ah, there you go. You don't want to waste the time with his talent there. Look, when it comes to the NFL draft, any draft, right, I'm looking for sleepers, players that might be underrated in the draft who do you think is the most underrated prospect in this draft so I'm not going to go too much into the weeds here and give you like a fourth round pick or a fifth round pick or something like that these are guys that are borderline first round picks if they don't go in the first round they will absolutely go in the second round I love Braden Fisk the defensive lineman out of Florida State he's 6'1 he's just under 300 pounds could play all across the defensive line, really versatile defensive lineman, and was wonderful uh, for the Florida State Seminoles a year ago. And then I look back at Michigan. His dad played in the league. His dad was a pretty damn good player. The big fella, Chris Jenkins, has a lot of mobility too. I think whoever takes Chris Jenkins early second round is going to get someone that could go play in the league for 8 to 10 years. All right, I like that. Two good steals. They always got to look for those steals. You got to beef it up with the big fellas, too. Yeah, got to go with the big fellas there. That can make an impact yeah. coming come there. Now, you don't want no pipsqueaks. No pipsqueaks. <laughs> they can't have that in the NFL. When you look at the top talent here in this draft, 
Is there a player you feel like is the safest pick in terms of the projected guys to go in the first round of the draft, and why? Who's the safe pick? Can't miss. Got to take this guy. He's going to fit in any place and, and go. I'll go back to the football lineage. The best player in this draft, hands down, the safest pick, a guy that will be a pro football Hall of Famer and will be a 10-plus year pro in this league, all pro, is Marvin Harrison Jr. I, I saw him play. The, the last two years at Ohio State. This year, he didn't have an efficient quarterback. And the only reason why Ohio State was in that game up against Michigan in the big house where I was at was because of Marvin Harrison Jr. And they still didn't use him enough in that game. This dude was born to play football. He is the consummate professional, and he's just a flat-out stud. Listen, you're sticking with the lineage there. We know how good his pops was. Amazing for the Colts, amazing wide receiver, and we'll see if he can carry on tradition. Now, let's go on the other hand, because you got the safe pick. Got to talk about the risky picks. Got Some people might be risky. Who do you believe is the riskiest pick projected to go in the first round of this draft? So I do think it's Drake May, because Drake May, in all likelihood, is going to be the third or fourth pick in the draft. Could go as high as two, even though I think the commander's We'll take Jaden Daniels. But the floor to the ceiling is a big concern for, for uh, Drake May, where if he tanks and he's that bad and he plummets and use the third or fourth pick on him, like I can easily see that. And I just don't know if the ceiling is elite great quarterback. Like I've heard people say, oh, okay, you compare him to, like, built like Justin Herbert. They say that he plays like Josh Allen. That's easy to say. Right. A lot of teams have got burned, right? Zach Wilson, he could be a poor man's Patrick Mahomes, we heard that. And Zach Wilson is an absolutely terrible quarterback, as Jets fans have realized. So I'm just concerned about Drake May because they're selling you on the potential. Potential means you haven't done it yet. And that just scares the crap out of me. Yeah, you know what also scares me too, Zach, is it's comp sometimes. I was listening to you just say that about Zach Wilson being a poor man's mm -hmm. Patrick Mahomes. And it's like, we get a lot of these comps wrong, right? We have all oh, 100%. Comps, get a lot of these comps wrong before the draft. So, yeah, sometimes you got to be wary of the people who are making these comps. We got to talk about the local teams and the New York Jets. Next season, Jets had a rough season this past <laughs> year. They're expecting to compete with Aaron Rodgers back under center. They've got he's a, not running for vice president? He's not running for vice president. He's <laughs> took himself out of that. He's game. not doing ayahuasca in the, no. uh, the dark cave well, now? I can't speak, I can't, that, that I can't speak to. That he knows. probably is. That he probably is. I can't speak to that. But listen, they've got a crucial first-round pick here, right, at 10. In your opinion, should they focus on offense or defense and Who's a player you might look at for them in that regard? You got to get sexy if you're the Jets. All right, go on the offensive side of the ball. We know that defense is solid, and the defense, which was good last year, will become great this year as long as you keep number 12 upright and healthy because he will help out that defense by simply holding on to the football and putting the ball in the end zone, something the Jets struggled immensely this year. You could go offensive line because I know they revamped the offensive line, but Teron Smith is a walking injury at this stage of his career. But I look at a Brock Bowers, if he's there at 10, I don't know, and he will be there at 10, I don't know how you don't take him. And then here's the thing to watch. Marvin Harrison Jr. and Malik Neighbors are going to go early in this draft. They won't be there at 10. But if Roma Dunze, who I could argue is the second best wide receiver in this draft class, if he's there at 10, you don't even need to put the Jets on the clock. Just write down the name Roma Dunze out of Washington. That takes about three or four seconds. And you hand that uh, card up to the podium and you take him. So I would look at Roma Dunze. I would look at Brock Bowers. Maybe the Jets could trade up, though. If I'm the Jets, I'm all in. You have a year or two window with Aaron Rodgers. Have no regrets. If, let's say, a neighbors or a Dunze is in danger of going before 10 and they're still there at 6, 7, or 8, I would have no problem trying to execute a trade if I'm Joe Douglas. All right, we'll see if the Jets are aggressive. They'll see if they keep it sexy and try to improve the offense there. I agree. We know the defense is solid. Let's see if they can build up that offense for Aaron Rodgers. Now, the Giants, they pick six, folks. And look, let's just keep it a buck here. <laughs> they have a lot of needs, okay? So what do you think the Giants should do with their first-round pick? Remember Joe Shane? Knows Brandon Bean pretty well from their time in, in uh, Buffalo and then also in Carolina. I think the Giants want to go get a quarterback. Uh, we all saw Daniel Jones yesterday with the eyes. I think he realizes that his time, no matter what he says, is coming to a close. But you can't reach and just take a quarterback at six for the sake of taking a quarterback. So here's what I think the Giants do. If four quarterbacks go off the board before the Giants pick at six, then the Giants will not take a quarterback. So if you have Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, 
J.J. McCarthy and Drake May off the board, Giants will not take a quarterback at six. If one of those guys are there, probably either Drake May or J.J. McCarthy, they will take a quarterback at six. But if all four of those guys already go, then you take the best player available, and it's going to be a wide receiver because at that point, I would say Marvin Harrison Jr. is off the board, so probably a Malik Neighbors. I'm going to go back to the quarterbacks for a second because if their options are Drake May or J.J. McCarthy, and you said earlier J.J. McCarthy, or was it Drake May you said it's about fit? He gets drafted both. by the Giants. Yeah. And you say both about fit, right? But I don't do you see either of those quarterbacks as good fits with the Giants. I would say Drake May a better fit for, than J.J. McCarthy because J.J. McCarthy is NFL ready. You could put him into a system and he could play. I don't think the Giants have enough, though, to succeed in year one gotcha. with J.J. McCarthy. But with Drake May, a lot of people say he's not NFL ready yet and he's going to have to sit a year. Now, it's tough to sit a quarterback, especially in this town, when you take him six overall. And let's be real, um, Daniel Jones isn't Kurt Warner, and still Eli Manning <laughs> ended up getting on the field midway through that season over Kurt Warner, who was playing well with the Giants. But if the Giants take Drake May, you fully commit to sitting him for an entire season, and then you use the money that you're paying Daniel Jones, and you throw him to the Wolves, and you just have to have him deal basically running for his life once again. Okay, not a bad plan. We'll see if the Giants look to take a quarterback. Last thing for me here, Zach, from a media perspective, how has coverage of the NFL draft changed in recent years, and what do you enjoy? Because I know you're somebody who's been out to the draft, covered it multiple times. What do you enjoy about covering the draft? My favorite part of the surprises. Like a few years ago, A.J. Brown gets traded to Philadelphia, and everyone was like, wow. Or whenever you have a crazy trade-up. I'll never forget when I was in Philadelphia, and it was when Mitch Trubisky got drafted, or I like to call him Mitch Trubisky. He got drafted second overall by the Bears, and the Bears traded up from three to two to get him. And at the time, I'm like, what are the Bears doing? <laughs> you know, you had Deshaun Watson on the board. Obviously, no one knew what Patrick Mahomes was going to become, so that's why I threw out the name Deshaun Watson. But it's always the surprises, whether it's the trades from players that are disgruntled on a current team and not getting paid, or a, 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 a just a surprising draft trade up the board, or when someone falls. Like, I was incredulous a few years ago, and I think the draft process gets very stupid. It's very stupid because we don't watch the film, and so many people go, oh, this guy had a good 40 time. Oh, this guy shined at the Senior Bowl. Like, who gives a rat's ass if I'm just being honest with you with that stuff? Watch the damn tape, and Justin Jefferson was someone where I could not believe Justin Jefferson was falling. And he was like, I think the fifth wide receiver off the board in that draft class in Philadelphia took Jalen Rager and the Vikings were like jumping up and down like fat kids in a candy store. And I talked to Justin Jefferson the next day and he said, all the teams in front of me that took wide receivers are going to pay and I'm going to be the best wide receiver in the NFL. And look, he lived up to the hype and what he was saying. He is. He listen. There's a, lot, there's a lot that goes on before the draft, right, in terms of covering it at the draft. Yeah. All these projections, all these things that happen. I, I had Braden Fisk in studio from Florida State, who, yeah. I, who I brought up, and one of his uh, detractors was he has small arms. And he walks in the studio, and I'm a pretty big guy, and you are as I'm well. Guy, and, and I'm like, small arms? I go, what the heck are they talking about? <laughs> uh, or, or, or the bend is also a big thing, or as Kenny Pickett knows, the, the small, small hands, hands too. Joe Burrow got that as well. Joe Burrow had that as well too. There's always little things, and then when the people are wrong about it, no, nobody, you don't hear, they're nowhere to be found. Yeah. Nowhere to be found. Use it as a little extra motivation. That's what the players do for sure. That is Zach Gelb, the host of the Zach Gelb Show on the Affinity Sports Network. Check him out. Always good to talk some football with him. We did it early in the NFL season, did it for the draft. We'll have to do this again soon. Anytime you want, Dexter. I'm here. I only live five minutes away. That's which is, <laughs> which is, which is <laughs> for me. Thanks, I appreciate you, man. You got it. Thanks. All right.